Hi everybody, I'm Enes Uslo. Today I'm going to talk about Eva Topper's Night Hawks. This is the painting that you see uh, on the screen that I'm going to explain in, in upcoming slides. I'm going to start with the general overview. Uh, with the formalist approach, I'm going to explain the view, the objects of the scene. And later on, I'm going to continue with the background. In the background side, I will draw the picture of the United States in the 20th century. And also, we will get into deeper into the Edward Hopper's career, his characteristics and his style. And in the last part, I'm going to uh, uh, explain with the more details about this painting, with the naming, with the themes, and also the analysis and comments about the painting. And the last part, we'll talk about the inspiration of the location and Hopper's inspiration. And last but not least, uh, the, uh, the other artworks uh, inspired by the Hopper. So this is the main painting. And when it comes to the general overview, you can say that this painting has been completed in 1942. And right now it is located in Chicago Art Institute. It is oil on canvas and it was when it's completed it was purchased for $3,000 which is around uh, $43,200 for uh, today's number. When we look at the scene with the formalist approach uh, we can see a kind of place on the right side in, in where four figures are located inside. There's one chair wood counter uh, you can see over here and uh, when we look at the figures, there is one brown-haired woman with red blues and holding something. And there's, there are two men wearing dark suit and steel gray hats. One of them is holding cigarette. And there is one blonde guy with the white cap inside of this counter. We can see two metal tanks and one door in which we, are not under, we don't understand where it goes. And we can see that there is a kind of unnatural light source coming from around, uh, what we can understand from the lighting as well. And when we look at the outside, uh, there's a kind of sign on the top of this place with the cigar picture. And we are able to see the red, red brick buildings are with halfly visible windows and some green places around. The only visible object over here is this one. And when we look at the ground, there is a uh, grey and light green ground with the jade green tiles. And we, we are also able to see this glass corner. So this is the overall painting. And before getting into more detail with the iconologist approach, I'm going to uh, explain the background, the 20th century of the US, than the Edward Hopper's career so that we can uh, basically have more easier connections between his life and his career and th this painting. So when we look at the United States in 20th century, uh, there are actually there were four main events has been occurred. The first one is the Second Industrial Revolution, then later on Great Depression and the Pearl Harbor attack and the Second World War uh, that the United States has entered. When we look at the second industrial revolution, uh, it was the time that the electricity was uh, electricity and the petrol has been started to use and the mass production has been increased. Uh, that's why based on these changes, actually human responsibility was changing as well. Like they were uh, before they were more like working on the physical activities. But after this time, uh, with the entrance of the automation, they were more like uh, working with less physical activities. The population was increasing so much and at the same time the modernity of life was increasing and in, in these times we are able to see more like people are getting into the cinema or hotels or the theaters they these were getting uh, being more popular between uh, the the let's say population actually it was until 1929 uh, until the Great Depression. And Great Depression is one of the, let's say, the longest and deepest uh, economical depression that has been occurred in, in 20th century. And in these times, we are able to see that there's a huge increasing of the crime or with the unemployment. And also, lots of the corporations or the banks was failing. And uh, also, a lot of people were homeless. They were, they needed to stay in the outside. And people were hungry, actually. 
and it, it has been until 1939. In 1944, 19, 1941, uh, there was a Pearl Harbor attack has been uh, happened, and this was actually just uh, it's, this is uh, this, this painting that I'm talking about, the Edward Hopper's Night Hawks, has been completed just after this attack of Pearl Harbor. And actually, we know that this attack has created a, a panic and anxiety over all over the, the United States. And people were afraid of having one another second attack. And there was a kind of uh, people were trying to hide from the sec possible second attacks with the blackout drills. They were closing their lights. They were hiding the city, actually. And what we know from Joe Hopper, uh, Edward Hopper's wife notes that... Uh, Edward Hopper was kind of refusing to having blackout drills, but he was more uh, intended to work on his work in his studio. And there was a kind of uncertain future as well, like people were afraid of uh, what's going to happen. It was a kind of because like it was it seems like uh, the entrance of United States into Second World War. And this was the actually uh, one of the uh, events has been very close to the completion of uh, this Night Hawks painting. And between 1942 and 1945, uh, it was the Second World War uh, in which most of the people had, has, had needed to go overseas in order to join Second World War. And the most of the streets or let's say uh, the city, cities were empty, there was no people and there was a great fear between people and the inside they were afraid of what's going to happen. And that's why actually uh, the painting Night Hawk is, is uh, seemed like this is one of the uh, the painting represents the alienation of war, and we are going to talk about it later on. When we look at Edward Hopper's life, uh, he was the second second children of his family, and he was born in 19, 1882. His father was a kind of lover of literature, and his mother also enjoys drawing. And maybe because of that, uh, his talent of painting has been recognized by his parents in, with, uh, in very early ages. And what also we know that he started to sign his drawings by the age of 10. And he went to commercial art school in New York City in 1899. And according to Gail Levin, who is the biographer of Edward Topper, he says that just like his father, he was not also uh, into working on the commercial work and it was kind of alien to his natural band and maybe because of that he transferred to the new york school of art and new york school of art is one of the let's say uh, the, the most uh influenced factor in his life based on his teachers and also for when we uh, consider his future paintings because like he was uh able to learn from most influential teachers of those days who are Mary Chase, Robert Henry and Kenneth Miller. And what we know is that Chase and Henry had been influenced by French Impressionism, which we are going to see that the French Impressionism has, has, a, has a huge effect on the Edward Hopper's career. And Henry was encouraging students to work on more like realist uh, paintings and also the American cities and uh, according to Hopper it was one of the most motivating force that he stayed for six years at the same school and at the same time he was working on Miller's class for the commercial uh, works and what also uh, like we can also uh, learn that in one of the debate with his friends uh, Edward Hopper was discussing about what an empty room would look like uh, when he was in this school and about this his wonder about uh, this uh, empty room uh, we can basically see that in 1950s and 1960s he had two paintings one of them is rooms by the sea and sun in an empty room so that we can see the effect of uh, this school even after many many years he was still thinking about realizing his ideas about this school. With the saved monies from his commercial assignments in Miller's class, uh, he went to Europe for three times between 1906 and 1910. 
and he was primarily in Paris and later in Amsterdam and he was more like enjoying the city, beauty of the city and uh, how the citizens appreciate the art. On the right side, we can see his paintings uh, from Paris that he was mostly concentrating on the architectures and the buildings and the beatiness of the city and which actually can be seen as a legacy of the Henry. And you can say that he has a very good use of color and uh, we don't see that much figures on his paintings, but mostly he was enjoying the uh, beatiness of uh, the city more. When he was in Paris, at the same time, expressionists actually were they making their uh, debates, and Picasso was moving toward Cubism, and this is one of his most uh, legendary paintings. And actually, what uh, later on, uh, Edward Hoppers was asked that if he met with Picasso or if he ever seen uh, one of his paintings while he was in Paris, he admits that he never uh, heard about Picasso. At the same time, uh, when Hopper was in Europe, he was able to see the most memorable retro perspectives of Corbett and Cezanne at the same time. Uh, we know that he was kind of admired to Corbett and he was more like complaining about Cezanne, uh, who is actually one of the post-impressionists. And at the same time, these are the other painters that he was kind of, uh, has an influence on his career. And he was uh, more impressed by the female figures of Manet and also uh, Degas, Degas uh, dynamically cropped versus the perspective of Degas and also the powerful lighting of Drabrands. Uh, in his other paintings, we're going to see that he was also uh, has intention to use this dynamically cropped and this voyeuristic approach that some kind of we are observing uh, the figures from the outside. And also, we will see that he's a kind of obsession of uh, the lightning and he was more focusing on the lightness and the shining of the painting. When he was back to New York, uh, his uh, US in 1910, this is the first painting that he painted in 1913. And this is actually uh, is going to become popular uh, with uh, the painting of the red brick buildings and the rhythmic figure of these open and closed windows. And at the same years, for a decade, he never sold anything. That's why he was more focused on the commercial work. He was uh, illustrating some business and trade journals. And we can see that there's a kind of uh, increasing modernity is uh, more visible on his uh, business and trade journals. And we can see the American culture and the consumerism and the leisure at the same time in same things. In 1915, he started to draw some uh, etchings and dry points, and uh, he actually got a great acceptance than his uh, earlier paintings. And this is actually his one of uh, two most important dry points, and uh, he was more like drawing the, the romantic possibilities of New York uh, in, in his dry points. And this is also his another painting. Uh, in, uh, in which uh, he painted one figure looking to outside. And again in 1927 in the Hoppers the City, this is uh, another, uh, these three uh, paintings are uh, his other paintings that he's, he's got become famous after the New York Corner painting. Because like he was more like using again the same red brick buildings and the rhythmic figure of open and closed windows. And it was kind of one momentary moment of these days that when you go out you can just see very similar photos that he was drawing uh, much more realistic and it was more like the cities were empty and there wasn't that much figures located in his paintings and between 1923 and 1928 he was more devoted himself on watercolor and he got a real professional recognition on watercolors and in 1924, in, in one of uh, his gallery, he actually sold out all his watercolor paintings. So it was a kind of financial, financial smash for him 
and after this time he never uh, worked on the commercial stuff but he was more focused on his art and at the same years he met with the Joe Josephine who is uh, his future wife also she was uh, the student of Henry at the same school and uh, we also know that Joe has a strong influence on Edward's career starting from here I'm going to show uh, some paintings of Edward Hopper and I will try to explain also my uh, let's say uh, what I realized from these paintings so you can say that there is a one woman female figure uh, sitting on the table and she's looked like alone and thinking about something especially in the night and we can see that there is a kind of glass wall at the behind and we can clearly see that this is a night and on the right side there are Two female figures are sitting on the table and again we are able to see the windows around and we have kind of uh, this, this cropped image that this is uh, directly this scene that we are looking into and we have a kind of uh, observer uh, approach that we are kind of voyeuristic approach that we are looking from the outside without information of these figures. And the Manhattan Bridge you can see that again the streets are empty and this is actually, uh, he was using the dark colors and the light colors at the same time in order to have this shining uh, of the suns. And we also know that he never painted the tourist attractions or some other skyscrapers or one of the most uh, famous Brooklyn Bridge. But he was more like, especially selecting these uh, places that he is going to paint according to himself. And on the left side, we can see theater or a kind of uh, this place uh, in which we don't see that much figures when we look at the, uh, let's say, uh, the open spots. And this can be actually related with the, uh, the increasing modernity of life on these times. Because like you can see that also the figures have a modern, uh, has modern clothes. On the right side, we are looking from outside into the, into the inside, and there we can see that there's a kind of this uh, rhythmic uh, figures of curtains. And again, we have the approach of uh, this uh, observer approach. We are looking from outside into uh, this home, and again, we are looking into from the windows. On the left side, you can see house by the railroad, which is ever the first painting by any artist to enter the permanent collection of uh, Museum of Modern Art. And on the right side, uh, again, we are looking exact one moment of the daily life that one uh, female figure is working on something and we're uh, directly looking at that time, but not before or after. So it's, it was a kind of uh, a momentarily point of uh, this life. On the left side, again, we're looking from outside into the inside. There are two figures sitting in the empty room, in the end, in the room, but they are not kind of look like they're communicating each other, but they they have more intention into focusing on what they do right now. And on the right side, there there's a gas station. Uh, it's a kind of evening, and there's no that much people around. And the hoppers called the evening. Uh, Hopper's uh, Cape Cod Evening. This is one of his paintings that he painted uh, based on uh, from his imagination. Because what we know that after 1930s, he changed his working method, but he was more like working on uh, rather than working on in the outside, but he was more like focusing on working from the studio based on his imagination. And what we also can see that these men and women are look like they're separated. They are not communicating each other uh, even though like they're not separated they are kind of separated momentarily for this time of the period they're more like enjoying uh, the exact time of this painting and again you can see that the, uh, the figures have uh, modern clothes and this is the office night uh, has been painted in 1940 on the left side you can see uh, the makeups dam bridge this is also uh, one of his city paintings. In most of his paintings, we can see those kind of hotels, theaters, but more more like the figures with the 
uh, with the modern clothes. And when I especially look into his uh, paintings, I can what I feel is that these figures are, even though they are not communicate, they are not communicating. But even though they communicate, they communicate like with the silence, with the quiet uh, level of their voice, so that they f I feel like they're kind of uh, speaking quietly to each other. And again, on the right side, we can see the lighting, the effect of lighting with the op with the empty streets, an empty city. And in these two figures, again, we are looking from inside to the outside or from the outside to the inside, as you can see. And there is no visible glasses of the window, but it feels like the figures are look like thoughtful. They are thinking about something or... Uh, let's say they have that kind of psychological layer of the paintings that he has kind of, they they are kind of showing their emotions inside of the paintings and this is his final painting that we see so when it comes to these characteristics i actually want to uh wanted to uh, cite some of uh, his words and also the other people's words about himself so that we can have kind of uh, output of his characteristic and what we also know that he was more uh, he was he thinks that uh, the paintings were kind of uh, the record of uh, painters emotions and he was kind of trying to uh, put everything he feels in, in his uh, inner life and he was kind of uh, more into about uh, placing his imagination and also the emotions into his paintings and when he's asked about if he ever seen like he, he was ever into painting about the american scene he was he answered that he was more like about painting himself but more like his inner life and what we also know from lloyd Gritch, who is the historian of edward hopper he says that he has no small talk he was a kind of quiet person but rather than talking too much or with the, a lot of words, his words were kind of a uh, product of long meditation. And he was uh, speaking tersely and with the exactness and with that slow, relaxing, monotone mode of speaking. And when it comes to the style, uh, as we, we saw his previous paintings, he was more like painting clean, smooth and too real and with the details and with the uh, with the more realistic approach and he had a kind of uh, obsession about the lights and the windows even we can see in this painting of a uh, night house and there's a kind of invitation for viewer to kind of complete uh, this, this this story of what's happening over here that's why we can say that he is a kind of this narrative approach and and we can clearly say that there's a kind of psychological layer that all his, all his figures are not communicating each other or the, the streets were empty and they're kind of they look like thinking about something and his figures are more like isolated or disconnected from the environments and this is actually what uh, distinguishes hoppers from the other painters at the same time and he was more focused on the modern life or everyday life in America uh, as some researchers say and he was more uh, focusing on the ma mass, the mood and the atmosphere of the environment with the uh, lightnings and with the shinings as well and a lot of researchers say that he was really uh, affected by the economic or political events or the wa wars especially and he was really impressed by uh, the American narrative cinema and from Joe's uh, journal, we also know that he was very uh, he was uh, very happy about his usage of color. And according to again his historian, uh, he was more into the details of our daily life. Uh, we're going to get into more detail, but for example, you, if you can see the details of uh, this scene over here. Uh, you can see that these are all each single detail are visible over here with the napkins or the uh, shakers or the peppers everything even though the liquid level but when we look at the whole uh painting this is kind of more like general 
general uh, scenes that every one of us can have emphasized in our daily life. Because of his style, most of the researchers uh, think that he was a kind of American scene painters, so that he was more like fo focusing on the American regionalism, or let's say urban and political social realism. And actually we also know that it was a kind of uh, movement against the European modernism and they were uh, more trying to uh, paint the daily American life and the more uh, with the realist style and actually he, he doesn't think that he was kind of painting the American scene but he was more trying to paint himself uh, that's why uh, the abstract expressionism and the impressionism that we're going to see after this slide is more like he was more close into these movements and abstract expressionism is one of the movements that he was actually uh, one of the most supporters and uh, it was between 1940s and 1950s this movement has been seen as a kind of post-war mood of anxiety and trauma that's why they were more like trying to express theirself, themselves and the emotions with the universal themes and according to uh, what he says in 1961, uh, he was still impressionist. And uh, even when we look at, into his paintings and all the other uh, painters that he was influenced, he was more like into using the light and the color and especially expressing something, some story with the narrative style and also uh, the realism with the use of better use of color. And uh, we we, according to researchers, they say that the Monet, Manet, and Renoir, or let's say Sisley, these are the all all the painters that he was really impressed. Also, uh, with the encouragement of the Henry uh, from New York School of Art, I especially want to uh, look uh, share two paintings, uh, one from Sisley and one from Monet, and this impression summarizes one of uh, let's say the first painting of. Uh, the impressionist movement and you can see the clear usage of uh, light and also the color in, in both paintings and what we also know that uh, his wife Joe has started to have kind of journals after uh, his the, after the, their marriage and according to uh, those notes that he was taking we have a lot of uh, sketchings and drawings before he starts to paint and what we also know that uh, Joe was kind of modeling for the female figures and Hopper was uh, modeling himself from the mirror for the male figures and when we getting uh, when we uh, get into the more details with the painting uh, we know that this name of Nighthawks has been uh, proposed by Joe, uh, we learn learn it from his uh, let her letters to uh, Hopper's sister. And what we can see from the theme of the artwork is that it's a kind of alienation and the loneliness of the modern urban life. And there's a kind of uh, mostly isolated figures, and it kind of represents the separation uh, between between the figures or this is a kind of uh, painting has been seen as the, uh, the wartime alienation and it, it kind of represents the anxieties about uh, about the conflict of the words and, and once he's asked about what he was painting that he was he said he answered that he was kind of pro uh, painting the loneliness of a large city and when we look at the vertical and diagonal uh, lines, he was kind of using uh, this geometrical approach in order to uh, better represent uh, these perspectives. And again, when we look at into this painting, we can see three uh, main parts of this painting. Uh, in the first part, you can see there's kind of this restaurant or diner, and uh, this part is the ground and with the other uh, buildings. And when we look at the painting, we can see that there's too much detail in, inside of this place. However, no much detail in the outside, so that we are kind of centered into uh, this place. Uh, and this is look like this place is the more center 
uh, and taking the direct attention of the viewer. And you can say that the most dominant colors are brownish red, jade green, and the bright yellow. And based on uh, these main colors, uh, it is changed based on the location of the light. And uh, one quick information that the fluorescent lights what has been started to use in 1940s, that's why uh, it became famous. And we can see that it's a kind of uh, that type of the uh, lights that he was using. And again, there was no effort of uh, showing this glass wall in the inside, but he showed the glass wall in the outside, just as he did in his previous paintings. And it looks like while we're walking from here, he has a kind of uh, invitation to weaver to the inside, and uh, it kind of gives this, this vulnerability to, to the viewer as well. And when we uh, get into more detail with the iconic approach, we can ask some few questions about about the time, about the date, about this place, and about these figures as well. And when we look at the outside, uh, clearly we can ask that why the streets are empty. Is it because the night time of the day, or maybe something else, or what is this object? All these uh, un questions would be answered based on some of uh, Joe's uh, notes from his journal, her journal, uh, but also uh, some of uh, our approach based on the background about the information of his career and also the United States at the same time. So we can see that this is a kind of uh, Cherwood counter uh, inside of a kind of cheap restaurant, according to Joe's uh, journal. And there's a kind of this window curving over here that he was kind of giving, uh, she was kind of giving our attention into this place and we also learned that this door was uh, opening into the kitchen but nowhere else and there's one this blonde guy and uh, red, this girl has everything sandwich over here and this figure on the left side has been introduced as a kind of dark sinister on the left side and these uh, darkish red brick houses has been uh, has been also explained in, in her journal. So let's get into more detail so that uh, we can see that this cherry wood counter is has a very very continuous surface so that even we can see the uh, reflection of uh, this figure on this counter and we can see the glass walls, napkins, uh, paper shakers and papers and the soles as well. And at the same time, uh, these tools has been located in in very systematic way that their distances are the same. And we're able to see two metal tanks with the liquid, uh, and even the, 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 the liquid levels are visible over here. And when we look at the scene over here, there is no door into the uh, into the inside of this restaurant, but only door goes into the kitchen. And again, uh, we're also able to see this lightnings. Uh, around inside of uh, this this diner in this restaurant and when we look at the figures they look like they're more like thinking about something and they have this kind of emotional uh, looks on their faces and even though these two the two figures are close to each other we are not clearly see that if uh, they are touching each other or not but we can clearly say that they are not uh, they're not communicating right now and this uh, figure is more like focused on what is going on on the outside and when we look at to the outside uh, these windows are kind of uh, halfly opened so that uh, we can we can say that there is no that much clear uh, abundance uh, in the city but it feels like uh, maybe it's the night time of the day or maybe uh, people has just left these places but they're not living over here anymore and the only clear object in the outside is this uh, cash register and which actually can be somehow related with the financial situation of the US at the same years as well because like pe the people were hungry it was a kind of uh, second world war so that people have kind of uh, this uh, anxieties over the world 
and we don't see any objects inside of these shops around so that these are empty as well and when we look at the scene the scene is kind of from uh, the strangers uh, view from the outside and as you can see there's no lights comes uh, from the outside but the only light source is in the inside of the restaurant and actually this can be also related with the uh, with the blackout drills uh, during the Pearl Harbor attack because like uh, as we know that Joe Hopper was still uh, continued to draw uh, during these days and he wasn't accepting those blockout drills or hiding himself from uh, let's say possible attacks and it was a kind of hope actually for for the people so that uh, it's a kind of light of hope for people so that the everything is going to be fine and then we look at with the more commenting side uh, you can see that the seven stools, uh, as I said, it was it has the same distances, and there would be more uh, seven stools on the left side as well, which we can clearly say that this uh, this diner has a kind of guests less than expected actually. There are only three guests, but uh, there is a place for fourteen guests, and we can maybe have a kind of uh, comment that it's a kind of very night, very uh, late uh, time of the day. And also we can see it from this coffee urns, this metal tanks that the liquid levels are very really less. That, that's why it supports uh, this idea at the same time. And we can also relate, uh, relate it with the Joe's journal so that uh, we can understand from over here uh, the paintings are not very continuous on this part. So comparing with the uh, continued, continuous surface of this cherry wood counter, uh, these paintings over here are not look very well so that uh, this place could be kind of cheap restaurant even though we can understand from uh, the other objects over, see, over here you can say that and when we look at this figure he kind of have something over here on, the, on his left arms and which kind of looks like newspaper and this would be also related with the, the other uh, events has been occurred like Pearl Harbor attack at those times that people were trying to uh, let's say uh, reading everything from the newspaper uh, in order to uh, let's say based on their uh, anxieties and again when we look into uh, the figures as I said it before they do not look like communicating each other but they are more like isolated figures inside of this restaurant and we don't see any as you see we don't see any door into this restaurant even though into this cherry wood counter uh, there is no kind of uh, door that we can just uh, get into however we are more like ob observing everything from the outside and uh, this cherry wood counter looks like the only one of the uh, let's say connection between these figures and they're all these figures are kind of alone together and they're separated inside of this momentary scene and yes basically uh we don't see any sign of life in the outside and this would be related with the pearl harbor attack or an, and the the u.s entrance into the second world war so that people were afraid of going outside and this is these blinds are uh, halfway pull, pulled down so that uh, we can understand there is no complete abundance and maybe this cash register as I said kind of represents the financial aspects so in, in the last part I'm going to a little bit get into uh, the detail of the location uh, researchers uh, were trying to uh, understand in, in which part of the city uh, the Edward Hoppers has been drawn in, in his painting and once he said that uh, he he drew the restaurant in New York's Greenwich Avenue where two streets meet and researchers was looking for that specific moment that specific spots of this painting however uh, according to their researchers uh, he, they, 
eventually concluded that this wasn't only the one perfect uh, place of the night the uh, the New York corner, but it's the kind of perfect combination of uh, different places, so that Ava Topper kind of uh, draw uh, this composite uh, intersection point based on these different buildings. And there are some debates about uh, his inspiration as well. Uh, one of uh, his uh, biographer, Gail Levin, says that uh, he was inspired by this the killer's story of Hemingway's, in which uh, we know that he, uh, it was uh, published in this Scribner's magazine. And there are some similar uh, similar scenes of restaurant, and also some similar uh, scenes about the. Uh, let's say the figures as well and also Gil Levin says that uh, he he would kind of uh, he would be inspired by the cafeterias at night from the uh, Vincent van Gogh because of the lightnings and because of the restaurant as well but however uh, there is no solid evidence that this is also kind of debate has been uh, proposed by the Gil Levin in this part, I'm going to explain some of the uh, movies that uh, actually inspired by the Hopper. Uh, as Gail Levin said, he was inspired by this uh, Hemingway's short story, The Killers. And after some time, uh, the movie of Hemingway's The Killers has uh, clearly impressed by the Hopper's painting. So that there are very similar scenes at the movie as well. And there are a lot of uh, paintings and sculptures as a kind of uh, effect of Edward Hopper's. So that they were painting, especially some of them. In the, some of them, they were uh, painting the similar scenes. And in most of the albums, uh, paint, paintings has the same uh, images as you can see on the left side over here. And also, the name of Nighthawks has been very popular in most of the, uh, let's say, scenes or the albums. And you can see these are some of the other uh, movie scenes. And that's all from my side. Thank you so much for listening.